Hi and welcome to the channel. It's been a few weeks since I made a video because I've been uh, quite involved in building the virtual reality game that hopefully you've seen the trailer for. What I want to do today is to cover the correct selection of fluorescent probes. So if you're in, if you are involved in biological research and you are staining cells or tissues with fluorescent probes, it's really important that you select the correct ones that will match the microscope that you have access to. Now that requires that you have some appreciation of the excitation and emission spectra of the fluorescent probes that you are going to buy. And what I'd like to talk about in this video is how we find out what the excitation and emission spectra are and how we can estimate how efficient a particular probe will be on the microscope that you have access to. And we'll do that straight after this. So before we start, let me just say that I'm, I have no uh, financial interest in Thermo Fisher Scientific whatsoever. It just happens to be the place where I would typically buy fluorescent stains. And the website is nicely laid out. It has a cell staining tool and it's got a spectral viewer, which I find particularly useful. So um, that's my disclaimer. I get nothing from, from this. So let's have a look at the cell staining tool then. So here we have, if you if you do a web search for Thermo Fisher Scientific Cell Staining Tool, you'll find this very, very useful tool. Okay, so what do we want to do? Well, let's, let's just start by picking a few uh, fluorescent probes almost at random. This is absolutely not the way you would normally do this. But for the purposes of the exercise, let's do it this way. So we will, let's say, stain our nucleus. So we'll cl click on nucleus. We maybe want to do it blue, so that would probably be in the UV. Uh, yeah, there's DAPI. I've obviously looked at this one before. Let's do Hirsch Treble 342 or Bisbenzamide, one of my favourite fluorescent stains. Let's just apply that one. And we see we get a nice blue nucleus. Uh, maybe we want to stain the actin in our cell, so we'll stain the actin green. And yeah, Lexafluor 48 phalloidin, that would probably be quite a good stain if we had a, an argon ion laser. So let's pop that one in. Tubulin, yeah, let's make the tubulin kind of maybe orangey red. Uh, 555 antibody, yeah, okay, let's go with that one. And finally, oh, it's, there's the mitochondria there. Let's go for the mitochondria. Yeah, we'll do these deep red. Yeah, let's use mito tracker. All right, so I have randomly selected four different fluorescent stains. This is absolutely not the way you should um, approach buying fluorescent stains. But for the purposes of this demonstration, it's useful just to have four fluorescent stains selected so that we can determine whether or not these fluorescent stains would work on the microscope that we have access to. Now, for the purposes of this exercise, we will assume we have a microscope which has three laser lines, 488 argon ion, 550 helium neon, 637 red diode. This is quite old fashioned because the microscopes that you will probably be using these days will have diodes, but they will still have excitation lines that you need to be aware of. So what we want to find out is whether or not these three probe, four probes that we have chosen, how efficient will they be if we use a microscope with these three laser lines? Well, let's have a look individually at each of them. We'll start with Hirsch. So we select a Hirsch and we see here that it's reasonably priced at £112 uh, sterling for 10 mLs. Now what I'm typically looking for would be this, the fluorescence spectra. This tells me the excitation in blue and the emission spectra. 
But what's really useful about this website is that we can open this in the spectral viewer. So here we have our spectral uh, view and we know that we've got an Arganine which is 488 nanometers. We are hoping that that would intersect somewhere on the excitation curve. So let me add in a custom laser with a 488 nanometer wavelength and we see from our, our diagram that that Argon ion laser is nowhere near going to excite this excitation peak. So in my microscope, which has only 488, 550 and 637 lines, I cannot use the Hirscht die. Let's go back and look at the other ones. What about Alexa Fluor 488 for Lloyden? 522 pounds. So you can see how these things can be quite expensive. Uh, now here's my fluorescent spectra. Let's open it in the spectral viewer. Right, now let me add in my laser. So I'm going to add a laser. I'm going to add a custom laser and give it the exact excitation. So my Arganine laser. And what we see here is that it certainly intersects with the excitation um, spectra and it looks like we might get about, what would you think, maybe 75% efficiency with the Alexa Fluor 488 which is not too bad and that would be up to you to decide whether or not that was high enough up the peak to, to warrant you making that purchase. You'll see um, that the emission spectra here actually overlaps a little bit with the excitation spectra and you would need to be um, mindful of that. Let's look at the tubulin. 555. Let's look at its excitation and emission spectra, hopefully down here. Ah, so we don't have an excitation and emission spectra for this one that I can see. Okay, so what you would need to do in that case is that you would have to search through the literature or read in some detail the information that's on the website in order to determine what is the excitation peak and what is the emission maxima. So bear in mind that not all of these dyes will have a spectra. Let's hope that MitoTracker has one. 318 pounds for 2050 microgram vials. Oh, here we go. We'll open this in the spectral viewer. All right, so you see this is quite a far red stain. Now, what is the longest wavelength that we've got? We've got a red diode that will give us an excitation of 637. So let's pop that one on our diagram. We'll add a laser. We'll make it a custom laser. We know our laser gives our red diode gives us a 637 nanometer. Um, well, you can see here that it's actually probably maybe only less, less than 60% efficient and it's also almost over, is overlapping with the emission spectra. So perhaps Mito tracker might not be an ideal probe for me to use, but I do have a 550 excitation line from my helium neon. So let's put a 550 in and see how that looks. So I'll add another laser. We'll just make it a custom one and make it 550. And you see there, well, okay, I got almost probably the same efficiency where you see where it cuts the, the, the spectrum. 
In fact, actually a little bit better here. That looks like maybe over 60% efficiency. But crucially, when you are visualizing the emission, you will hopefully not be seeing any of the excitation light. Okay, so I could say an awful lot more than that. I want to keep the video fairly short. What I would recommend is that if you are in the business of selecting fluorescent probes, have a play with the cell staining toolkit, have a look at the spectral viewer, put the laser lines on the diagram that represent the lasers that you have, and hopefully it should start to make a little bit of sense. So it's really just a push in the, in the hopefully in the, in the right direction for beginning to start to think about the collect the collection the, the correct way to select your fluorescent probes see you next time